It was a horrible, horrible night. Something that my son should never have gone through whatsoever. For a child to go through something like that is unbelievable at 11 years old. We have a problem in this country, war zone related crashes. We as contractors need to take the proper action and steps to protect the public because we know things will happen. Why can't we do that? I'll tell you why. Because the contractors feel that safety is a burden to their projects or a burden to their company. And safety costs money. On October 1st, 2007, 11-year-old Tyler Brashear was sleeping at his father's apartment in Sarasota when he woke up not feeling well. His father, James, decided to drive Tyler to the boy's mother's home, about an hour away. They headed north on Interstate 75, with Tyler buckled into the front passenger seat, and soon encountered a long line of brake lights shortly after midnight. I remember I just like leaned over and said, what's going on, like, is there construction or something or something going on, and then that's it. A highway contractor was setting up a work zone and brought traffic to a dangerous halt on the blind side of a steep overpass. James was the last one in line, and while they were waiting for the traffic to clear, unbeknownst to him, a tractor trailer came over the overpass without any warning whatsoever that any type of construction was being conducted and just rolled right over him. He died in my son's lap. And from what I understand, he said, I love you, to my son. And then from what I understand, he was gone after that. James was one of two fatalities that night. Miraculously, Tyler suffered only minor injuries. Across the United States, 5,000 motorists and construction workers have died in highway work zone accidents over the past five years. 200,000 have been injured. With the current boom in highway work due to stimulus money, transportation officials say they're worried this will result in more work zone deaths. Another driver who doesn't get the picture. In response, authorities are cracking down on speeding and inattentive driving and some states are stiffening penalties for motorists who kill or injure construction workers. Don't risk your life because you didn't get the picture. But 85% of those killed in highway work zone accidents are not workers, they're motorists. And while federal and state authorities hold the driving public responsible for causing a dangerous crash on a work site, the road building industry goes virtually unpunished when they create a hazardous work zone due to neglect, carelessness, or desire to save money. That's because there are virtually no laws or regulations requiring highway contractors to perform their job safely. Instead, there are loosely enforced standards that differ state by state. As a result, a contractor implicated in a serious crash is likely to be rehired, and their dangerous practices likely to go uncorrected. I hope that we, as a state, as a country, really realize that we need more accountability to be put on the contractors themselves. Get your glasses on, don't get no dirt in your eyes. Okay, yes sir. Jesse Cepeda is safety director for a major highway construction company that does work all over Texas. This is very interesting. I'm going to circle around here so we can take a look at, at a lane closure. As we approach, there is a lane closed up ahead that clearly to your right hand side we have no signage in place. This is a very, very bad situation. When you start citing a contractor $250 or $500 for a violation in their work zone that could cause harm to the general public, they'll stop immediately. Right now they're not going to stop because there's nothing that's going to make them stop. Could you please state your name? Anthony Mark Kelly. I work with Zep Construction. Zep Construction? Yes, sir. Anthony Kelly was in charge of safety the night Tyler's dad died in Sarasota. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Check to the form. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. 
What were you convicted of? Same objection. Go ahead. Driving while license suspended. How many times? 23, 24. Standards set by the state of Florida required ZEP construction to place signs on the highway ahead of the steep overpass to warn motorists of the slowdown. There was no variable message sign a half mile before the beginning of the pace, was there? No. They were also supposed to close highway on-ramps to keep traffic from clogging and coming to a standstill. Were there trained flaggers on those on-ramps? No, they weren't blocked off. And as worksite safety supervisor, Anthony Kelly was supposed to be familiar with all the Florida DOT manuals related to worksite safety standards. Are you familiar with this plan's preparation manual? No. Are you familiar with Chapter 10 of the plan's preparation manual? I'll let you take a look. No, if I'm not familiar with the whole manual, no, I'm not. But I'm looking at it now. For a person that was in charge of that roadway and in control of the lives of the motorists and also the, the construction workers, he absolutely was completely inexperienced and incapable of performing that uh, job. After the accident, the Florida Department of Transportation issued a deficiency letter to ZEP Construction for failing to abide by the state-approved traffic plan. But there was no fine or penalty. In fact, the agency still gave ZEP Construction a B grade for work zone safety on their job evaluation. What's your understanding of what the deficiency letter and the warning letter were all about? I have no idea. They have no basis for issuing a deficiency letter. Both ZEP Construction and Florida Department of Transportation declined our requests for interviews. The Brashear family has filed a lawsuit against ZEP Construction, two of its subcontractors, and the owner of the tractor trailer. The case is currently in litigation. Meanwhile, Jovan Zepchevsky and ZEP Construction continue to win big state contracts like this nearly $2.5 million bridge repair on the same highway as the Brashear crash. As for Anthony Kelly, he continues to work as a safety supervisor on Florida highways. What things do you keep in your room that help you remember your dad? I have pictures. I have a tennis ball that he got signed for me by uh, Martina Navratilova. He worked at a movie theater, and she came in for a premiere. My son, before the accident, was cheery, playful, 11-year-old boy. Since the accident, my son is distant. He spends a lot of time in his room by himself and refuses to talk about the accident. I know he probably has maybe some regret because he wasn't supposed to come home that night and he didn't feel well and he might have some regret on his part. That's impressive. Yeah. People always say that things happen for a reason. I don't believe that, but if something comes out of this that we could change regulations and save other people, then maybe there is meaning behind this accident. But changing industry regulations is not something the federal government believes is necessary. In an interview with the New York Times, Federal Highway Administrator Victor Mendez praised the safety efforts of contractors and state agencies, citing federal data that indicates a decline in work zone crashes in recent years. But the New York Times looked at two years of fatal work zone accidents and found at least 50 deaths not counted in the federal data. In fact, James Brashear's death is not listed in the data because it is not considered a work zone accident. Why? because he was stopped in traffic outside of the work zone when he was hit by the tractor trailer. When you sit back and you look that, you know, it happened, but it could have been prevented, that's where it comes to play, where it, it, it hurts you. That hurt was the loss of his 18-year-old son, Anthony Cepeda. We were just two peas in a pot, man. You could not separate us. In April 2008, days after his high school prom, Anthony was riding a motorcycle and approached a roadside work zone with no warning signs or barricades. The contractor had left a backhoe unattended on the edge of the roadway, and Anthony's motorcycle collided with the machine. The contractor that was here doing the work would have just done the basic standards and done what he was supposed to. Our son, Anthony Cepeda, would still be here. I just don't want 
another family to go through what I'm going through. We need to make a standard, uniform law that will cover every roadway in the United States. That's what we need to have.